Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Today's question comes from someone who wants to know, what is the difference between regular house cleaning and crime scene cleanup? Well, they're two very different types of cleaning and we'll talk about each one so that you can kind of see the difference. The house cleaning, the regular cleaning, is where you're gonna hire a maid or a house cleaner to come inside your house on a regular weekly or bi-weekly routine. And they're gonna come in and they're gonna bring cleaning supplies and maybe a vacuum and a mop. And they're gonna vacuum your floors and mop your floors, wipe down your baseboards, clean and dust the window sills and the blinds. They're gonna dust down the doorways and maybe your furniture, maybe they polish furniture. It could be cleaning out your bathtubs and your toilets and your sinks and your vanities and wiping down the things that are on your bathroom cupboards, wiping down your kitchen, your kitchen cupboards, things of that nature. So it's a pretty easy job as far as there's no biohazardous chemical waste and stuff like that that you're going to find when you have a crime scene cleanup. So it's just regular, everyday, basic cleaning. Now, a crime scene cleanup on the other aspect. Let's say that it's only going to ever happen once in a great while. This is not something that happens to people on a regular basis, I hope. So this is, this is something you don't plan for. And when it happens, you kind of need to know what to do. So on a crime scene cleanup, and this is usually for like a homicide or a suicide or where you have an unattended death. An unattended death is where somebody dies and they're inside their home and they're not found for a few hours or a few days and the body just decomposes. And as the body decomposes, that sets off airborne contaminants that the house cannot be lived in until it's cleaned properly. A crime scene cleanup is a lot more involved than regular basic routine cleaning. Now, in most states in the United States, you don't need a special college degree or anything to do crime scene cleanup. If you hire on with a cleaning company that does crime scene cleaning, you will go through training and you will learn about OSHA and hazardous materials and things of that nature so that you can protect yourself from biohazard chemicals. Now, when you go into a home, there are a variety of different things that have to be taken into consideration. So you just can't call up on the phone and say, hey, there's been a homicide at my house. How much is it going to cost to come clean up? Because every situation is going to be different. And so somebody's going to have to come over to your house and they're going to have to give you a quote based on everything that's going on. So on a regular crime scene cleanup, the things that you're dealing with are, let's say, how, how much junk did the people have in their house? If it happens inside someone's living room, let's say that there was a bloody grisly murder inside someone's living room and they were hoarders. Okay, that's going to take a lot more effort and energy than if the room was clean. Because wherever the biohazard chemicals, blood pathogens went, that needs to be cleaned up from everything. So when the cleaning team comes in, and they, they call themselves bioremediation, which is they're going to come in and they're going to remediate the items that are inside the house. And so there's a contamination area that's called the control area. And that is an area where they're going to have plastic sheeting and biotape. And they're going to tape everything off that's in that contained area that needs to be cleaned. Then there's going to be a buffer zone. And in the buffer zone, this is where the people that are coming in to clean, they're going to put on their personal protective equipment, which is a biohazard suit. There might be a mask of some sort. There are going to be gloves, some kind of a face protection. They're going to put on all their personal protective equipment so that they themselves do not get contaminated. Now, the Center of Disease Control has suggested that one out of every 24 people has either hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or HIV. And we don't know who, who died. And so you have to take the ultimate precautions for every single scenario that you go into because you're going to be dealing with body waste and blood pathogens and things like that that are communicable diseases. So you have to be super careful. But inside the buffer zone, then there's going to be a clean zone. And the clean zone is where you're going to have all of your cleaning equipment and your sanitary supplies and things like that that you're going to be using so there's no cross-contamination from outside the control area and the buffer zone. That way it allows them to get inside this one contained area and clean it up. So let's say that there was a homicide in a living room, for example. That cleaning crew is not going to come in and clean an upstairs bedroom. They're going to contain the area that they have to work in. 
but there's a lot of stuff that they have to know and a lot of stuff that they have to do in order to sanitize and deodorize and clean up that area so that it meets expectations for families to come and live again in that space. So there's a really, really big difference between regular cleaning and crime scene cleanup. Now, one of the common areas that both companies need to have is compassion. Because when you go inside someone's home and you're dealing with a family, on either case, whether it's just a regular cleaning account or whether it's somebody who's had this tragic, traumatic event happen, when you come in, you have to be compassionate. Something really bad or really serious just happened. You can't come in with an attitude and be all, you know, up in their business. You can't do that. You have to understand that this is a really touchy, sensitive scenario that needs to be handled with care. Another thing that's also very important, and this also goes with regular cleaning as well as the crime scene cleanup, is you need to have integrity. If you come inside someone's house, it's really easy to see valuables and things that are there and maybe take something that you would like to have. But you can't do that in either scenario. In both scenarios, the stuff does not belong to you and you just can't randomly take things that don't belong, right? All of those things belong to other people. So you need to be honest and you need to be compassionate and you need to be detail oriented. So in regular house cleaning as well as in the crime scene cleanup, you can't be skipping stuff, especially in the crime scene cleanup. You cannot skip stuff because every single thing has a process. And so even with the crime scene cleaning, after they've sanitized everything and they've wiped everything down, they spray with a special spray. They spray things at certain intervals that are like timed intervals. And then when the stuff sets and it has a chance to activate, then they wipe everything down again. So in regular household cleaning, where you might wipe, wipe something down once and you go, hey, we're good. It's clean. Here you might have to wipe it down two or three times in the crime scene cleanup so that you actually get all of the bacteria and the biohazard waste removed. So during that same process, unlike the regular cleaning, if you have the crime scene cleanup, let's say that blood, for example, were to get all over some furniture and that furniture could not be remediated. They're going to have to disassemble that and they're going to have to remove that furniture from the property and destroy it as hazardous waste. So there's a whole lot more stuff that's involved. So it comes down to what does it cost? What does it cost for a crime scene cleanup? Well, like I say, the price is going to be different for every different scenario because every crime scene cleanup is going to be different from the last. So you'll have to have somebody come over to your house and give you a quote. So who pays for the crime scene cleanup? Because with regular house cleaning, the homeowner pays for that or the business owner pays for that. Who pays for the crime scene? Well, unfortunately, the homeowner or the business owner also pays for that as well. Now, sometimes your homeowner's insurance policy will cover a crime scene cleanup. But here's the catch. You have to talk with your insurance company and make sure that that rider is in place before the accident happens. Because if you have an accident of personal injury or it is a homicide or a suicide or any of those things, if you go to your insurance company after the fact, they may not cover it. If it's not part of your existing policy, they may not cover it. And it's one of those things, no one is expecting it to happen, right? So a lot of people will skimp on that and say, no, we don't want that coverage. But if you have to call someone to come in and do a biohazard remediation and clean that up, it could be into the thousands of dollars where just a regular household cleaning company, it's going to be in the hundreds of dollars. So hundreds versus thousands. So do you add that policy on? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's worth that. But it is important to know that it's two completely different types of cleaning. And your crime scene cleanup is going to take a lot more time than just a regular two or three hour cleanup that a regular household cleaning company would come and do. So you're not hiring a regular maid to come clean up. You're hiring a company who is highly trained in different chemicals and, you know, personal safety and all these things. So there is a huge difference. Anyway, I hope that sheds a little bit of light because it is, in fact, an interesting question and hopefully one that you never have to deal with. That is my wish for you. Anyway, okay, so until I see you again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.